I want to show you how I paint this mountain stream in watercolor, gouache and colored pencil. And I'm starting with a quick loose sketch and I'm using a dark green colored pencil for this. Just adding in the basic shapes that I can see so that I have an idea where the single planes are and where I need to pay a, a little bit of attention and leave areas white. So this is just for reference. This is not meant as a detailed sketch. Now I'm switching to watercolors and I'm starting with a mix of burnt umber and raw sienna and I just try to add in the light stones that I can see at the edge of the stream. I'm trying to keep my brush strokes dry and a bit lighter, particularly in the area where you can see the, the sand through the water. And in the back I'm making my color a bit darker, so I'm adding a bit of sepia to the mix and I'm just trying to put in the stones that I can see in the water. Now I paint in the tree trunks that I can see in the back and a few more of the stones and the cliffs that are visible through the forest. Now I'm painting in the water and as you can see from the reference the water has this turquoise or even green uh, tone to it and I try to match this as close as I can and farther in the back it has a lot of these white areas where the stream is going over the rocks and I try to leave these areas white and I also um, want the water to be transparent in the foreground so I don't add a lot of blue in these areas and a bit of green around the edges to show the, the shadowed areas from the rocks and the overhanging greens. So I'm working with a fairly big flat brush here and I do this to prevent me from adding too many small details right from the beginning. So I'm using the biggest brush that I can get away with, so to speak. I'm adding this warm light green in a few places to indicate the leaves and the undergrowth uh, of the forest and the small bushes. And I'm trying to keep the warmer greens in the foreground and then in a minute you will see me add a more a cooler green to the background areas where the light doesn't hit. I'm using my brush here to get a dry textural effect to the background while leaving a little bit of white, paper white peeking through. Adding a bit of raw sienna to my green to show the light that falls on the cliffs in the foreground. Now I'm using sepia and uh, ultramarine blue for the shaded rocks in the back and I really want to punch in the contrast here and add the shadows. You can see this is still all looking very crude and uh, very non-organic. So while I'm working out how the different relationships of these shapes are and how the, the planes and shadows work, I slowly um, carve out, so to speak, the, the planes and shapes of the, the different objects that I can see. Here you can see I'm adding a darker and more subdued green to the back. And at this point I just want to uh, get rid of the white areas in my painting. I've switched to a smaller brush, so this is a cat's tongue brush, and this allows me to get uh, more um, organic shapes. 
So I'm smoothing out the water area a little bit and now I can use the cat's tongue brush to add leaf-like shapes to, to the background and to the forest areas. And I'm just working with the tip of this brush. As you can see, this, this looks a lot like leaves. Adding a bit of magenta to my green will dull it down and not make it um, stand out so much. So I have Taylo green in my palette and this is a really intense green and I'm using other colors to, to dull it down a bit. You can see I also added lemon yellow and this is uh, sort of semi-opaque so you can see that it, it layers over the other layers a bit. And I also added my gouache white at this point and this will also allow me to add opaque layers over the things I already painted. And having just this white gouache pen on my palette is a very easy way to add uh, gouache to your sketch. I'm adding a few of the stones in the foreground and more dark colors for the contrast between the rocks and the water. So you can see I'm adding burnt umber here over the areas that I already painted to add back contrast. And the values and contrast are always a bit of trial and error, so you will have to readjust this several times as you're painting, as I'm doing here. Adding back in a few of the rock structures that shine through the forest on the right side. And with a smaller brush, I can rework the rock shapes in the water. And I also add more of this deep green of the mountain stream in shadow. And I'm adding a few of the rocks that you can see through the water in the foreground. And this will give more interest to the foreground area. You can see I'm adjusting the tone and the values of the background here again by adding a bit of uh, cooler colors to over the areas I already painted. So bit by bit I'm sculpting out the shape of the rocks and so the the three-dimensionality of these rocks. Here you can see I added a bit of white on the right side. So the camera stopped there for a moment, but all I did was add a few white flecks over the uh, other layers. And this gives the illusion of light falling onto the leaves. I'm also adding uh, white or lighter areas to the planes on the rocks that are hit with light. And by now you can see the sketch is slowly taking form and what I want to do now is um, make the contrast between the different layers more visible and also add more highlights with my white gouache. And I add white to the areas of the mountain stream that are um, foam and reflected light so that it becomes more obvious that you have a really active stream here and not um, some still water. So I'm trying to use the side of my brush. Uh, this is a dagger brush that I have and when you have paint that's slightly dry, you can get these interesting textures from the paint and from the brush. I'm also adding a few of the lighter rocks that I can be seen uh, in the foreground of the painting through the water surface. 
and I'm refining the areas where I can see rocks through the leaves. Adding back that lighter edge to the rock in the right foreground. And now I'm adding more white reflections and white flags that you can see on the leaves that are hit with sunlight. I'm also adding in that dead tree trunk in, in the foreground on the left in the picture. And this will also add another layer to my image and a bit more interest and it will lead into the picture. I'm using a very thin dagger brush for this. So these kind of brushes are great for adding uh, organic detail like these branches that are coming off the, the tree trunk. I'm darkening the sand behind the tree a bit so that it can be seen more easily. And with a dry brush, I add a bit more texture to the tree trunks and to the rocks. And I'm mixing this dark background color from ultramarine blue and sepia. So this shadow color is a cool dark color. As you can see with the dagger brush, I can get a lot of good texture onto my rocks, making them look more three-dimensional that way. Now I'm switching to my colored pencils and the first thing that I do is add in a few blue strokes over the water surface and then a bit of raw sienna of this yellowy golden undertone. And I'm refining the areas uh, in the back of a little bit where the stream forms these small pools and also the the shadow areas you can see from the rocks. So I use a, a dark green for this. And colored pencil allows me to get really a lot of detail with a lot of control. You can see I'm changing whole areas of the, the forest green with my colored pencil here. And I make sure that the areas that I draw over are really dry so that I don't pick up any of my other color layers. I refine the white of the stream a bit more so that it jumps out even more at you. And now I'm at the stage where I can add in all these tiny interesting details that uh, will, will catch the interest of the viewer and that will keep his eyes occupied. So this is really the fun part of the sketch, you could say. And with a dull red, I'm adding more detail to the branches of this tree in the foreground and a few more tiny flecks and speckles that can be seen through the water. So I'm using this red, particularly in the foreground, to pull together all these single areas and uh, give them a unifying color. I'm switching to my brush again to add a few last white sun-hidden leaves. And with a bit of lemon yellow in my white, this will seem even more like uh, leaves being hit by sunlight. And switching to the colored pencils again, I'm using a purple 
to redefine the shadowed areas of the rocks. And now it's time to remove the masking tape. So the sketch is almost done. And the last few things I'm adding is the rocks in the foreground. They will get more highlight and then a few highlights here and there on the water surface and right under the water. So a few of the rocks that you can see through the water and a bit of blue to redefine the shadows. And the last thing I add are a few strokes of light blue. I'm taking back that last one a, a bit to blend it in more and I think that's it. So that's the finished sketch. I hope you found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, then give me a like or subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or want to see something specific in the future, then let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, happy sketching.